Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question one from the May 2018 POA paper two. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so let's take a read. So we have here, Rahali Security Enterprise buys and sells security devices only on credit. During the month of May, some accounting information was produced as follows. Okay, so let's take a look. So amounts owed to accounts payable on 1st of March. So that's the opening balance for the creditors control account. Then we have credit purchases, right? This item here, defective devices returned to sellers. That looks like returns out. Uh, next one, a debt to a creditor of 8770 was settled for a check of 8300. So if you settle the debt of 8770 for 8300, you receive discount. Uh, amounts owed to accounts payable at the end of the month. Okay, so this information here seems to be what we're going to be using for our um, creditors control account. Uh, then we have credit sales for the same month. Discount allowed. Then we have account receivable at the end of the month. Where's the opening balance? All right. Uh, and finally, we have the amounts received or paid, well, paid by or received from the account receivable people. Okay, so these last four items down here are for the debtor's control account, account receivable control account, and these first five are for the creditors. The first thing they wanted to do actually is to list any two journals which would provide some information above. Uh, right, okay, so let's take a look again at the information. So the amount paid, amounts owed, sorry, at the start, well, that's going to be brought down via the general journal. Uh, next, credit purchases. Well, credit purchases are recorded in the purchases journal. Uh, devices, defective devices, sorry, return to sellers. Those are going to be returns outwards. So that's the returns outwards journal. Uh, debt to a creditor was settled by a check. That's a cash book, right? So it might not be called the cash journal, but it is also a book of original entry. And I believe that that is what they were asking about. They're not just specifically journals. But again, journals are books of original entry. So I, I would allow the cash book, right? Amounts owed to accounts pay as a closing balance. That's not recorded in a journal. I, do, I don't think so. Well, technically general journal because it's the, the closing balance of one month is the open balance of the start of the next month, right? Cool. Uh, credit sales with the same. Okay, so credit sales goes in the sales journal. Um, the only journal we're missing here uh, is the returns in what journal, but there was no returns in. So um, we don't have to put it. Okay, so they asked for two items. I gave you five. So I think I have you covered. Let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so they want us to do um, the accounts payable control account for a Harley for me. Be sure to label the balancing figure in your answer. So that implies something is missing. Let's go back up to the information and, and populate the control account. Okay, so let's start with the opening balance. That's going to be on the credit side because it's a liability and liabilities have credit balances at start. Right? The next item is credit purchases. So when you make credit purchases, you're going to owe more money to your creditors, which means your liability is going to increase, which is going to be recorded via credit. Uh, next, defective devices return to sellers. Right, so that returns upwards. So when you send goods back, you reduce the liability. And to record a decrease in a liability, you need to debit the liability account. Next, a debt to a creditor of 8770 was settled by check for 8300. So again, if you had a debt of 8770 and you settled it, it means you paid it off with no extra still owing. But you only paid 8300. The extra amount, the 470, clearly was discount received from the creditor. So the first thing is the check paid. When you pay money to your creditors, you are reducing your liability because you're paying off some of what you owe. To record a decrease in the liability, you have to debit the liability account. Also, when you receive discount from your creditor, they are reducing your liability, which will, of course, require a debit. Right? Here now we have the closing balance, uh, which will also be recorded initially on the debit side as being carried down. Then we will put the totals there and bring the balance down. The missing figure, what could that missing figure be? Now, let's look at the account for context. So, we started off owing about 2400 We bought an extra 25000 more, so we owe about 27000 But here, we only paid off or reduced how much? About 9000 So, where's the rest? Well, that has to be more money we paid to them. So, it has to be that we're missing some payments to creditors here. So, the missing figure has to be... So, I have it as cash bank, but you can also put... Um, payments to creditors if you if you if you prefer that but again there's no one right thing that goes there right it differs okay so that's the accounts payable control account let's see what the debtors control account looks like okay so they're asking us to do the account receivable control account um, for a Harley for the same month of May be sure to label the balancing figure so if you remember when we were going through the information we didn't see an opening balance 
Let's go back up to the information. Okay, so this is the information here. We have credit sales for the month. Okay, so let's, let's populate as we go along, right? So credit sales will be on the debit side because when you sell on credit, you, your debt is not owe you more money. That's an increase in your asset, which requires a debit to the asset account, right? Next, we have discount allowed during a week-long sale. That's going to decrease your asset because you are allowing discount. You tell them, well, don't worry to pay so much. So you are reducing your asset on your own. Uh, the closing balance will be carried down from the credit side. All right, um, we're gonna put some total. Now, now we have, hold on, we have one more thing. I jumped the gun there a little bit. Um, amounts paid by account receiver or receipt from debtors, right? That's gonna go on the credit side because when debtors, when they pay you back, they reduce the amount that they owe you. And to reduce an asset, you need to credit the asset account. Okay, so now we could, um, we could put that balance on it. So what's missing? Well, most likely what's missing is the opening balance. I, I think that that is what needs to go there, right? So balance brought down. Okay, now, ladies and gents, if you guys need to take a look at my control accounts video, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check it out if you need to. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the question. Okay, so the last part of this question, uh, okay, let's just take a read of what they want us to do. So they want us to prepare the entries in the general journal to show how these events above, which we will go through, affect the income statement at the end of the accounting year. Narrative is not required. Now, let's just take a look at the format they've given us to use here. So it looks like a typical general journal format. And again, as we could see down here, it's seven marks for this question, which means you're spending about a minute and a half a mark is about 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes. Going back up to the information, let's, let's start to sort through this, right? So on 31st March 2017, the accountant at first called Transport Company discovers three year-end events that require entries in the general journal as follows. Okay. So the first one is that debtor had paid only 50% of the 3,000 owed to first called Transport. The money received and the bad that incurred had already been entered in the ledger. Okay, so a debtor had paid only 50% of the 3,000 owed to first call transport. 50% of 3,000 is 1,500, sorry. So he paid 1,500 and it says um, the money received and the bad that incurred had already been entered in the ledger. So it looks like we wrote off the remaining 1,500. So on, I know we have to do journal entries, but I'm using the T accounts to illustrate and help us see these things a little better because I find with journal entries a lot of people are weak with double entry and seeing the accounts helps me to explain and help students to understand a bit better okay so the first thing is that the bad debt expense account will have a debit entry because when you write off a bad debt you debit bad debt expense and you credit the debtor right now as this thing said here they want us to show how this affects the income statement now at the end of a financial period all expenses and revenues are transferred to the income statement. Why? To calculate profit. And the matching principle tells us that to calculate profit for a period, you have to match revenue earned with the expenses incurred in the creation of that revenue. So bad debt expense will be transferred to the income statement. How do we transfer an expense? Well, expenses decrease profit and profit decreases with a debit. So we're going to debit the income statement. And if we're debiting there, we're going to have to credit the bad debt expense account. Why do we do that? Well, if we have a debit balance inside of here, to remove it, to transfer it out, you have to credit the account. All right, so that's, that's what it's gonna look like. You're gonna see a credit here, and of course it says income statement because we are debiting the income statement. So in the general journal now, you will see a debit to the income statement and a credit saying bad at expense. And don't forget, with your general journal, your debit entries come first. Your credit entries are indented, hence the big space I have here. All right, and of course, normally you put your narrative, but the question said narrative is not required. Okay, so that's the first one. So let's, let's, um, let's scroll down, let's go up or down, whatever you call it, a little bit here and here as well so we can focus on the stuff at hand. Uh, next item, the company is to provide for bad debts at a rate of 2% of account receivable of that. Okay, so we have to create a provision for bad debts. Now that requires a debit to income statement and a credit to the provision account. So the provision account will have a credit entry saying that, um, yeah, 872. So it means we have to debit the income statement to record this adjusting entry, right? And credit the provision account. Now, why is the provision being credited? Well, not just as a counterbalance to debit to the debit to the income statement, but remember the function of the provision for bad debts is to reduce the debtor's balance in the balance sheet. Debtors is an asset. To record a reduction in an asset, you have to credit. Or, well, in this case, you'll have a debit balance in the balance sheet for account receivable debtors, and you need a corresponding credit balance to work against it to decrease it. That's the provision for bad debts. That's why it's credited. 
If you want to check out my video on the provision for bad debts, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. Just a disclaimer, this, that method I show is really for the CSEC people. Other people who are doing other syllabuses may not find that method very helpful because there's a different, more modern method that people use these days. Okay, so let's, um, let's scroll down again so we can take a look at the last item here and then <coughs> close off. So we have the company had paid the sum of 18000 to its landlord to cover the rent for a year and a half. A year is 12 months. A half a year is 6 months. So a year and a half is 18 months, 12 plus 6. And we paid 18000 for 18 months, which means 1000 per month. Now, let's put that 18000 in the rent expense account. Now, note it's on the debit side because when you pay an expense, you debit it. And think about it. The other account affected was the cash book. And once you make a payment, you have to credit cash or bank because they are assets. And if you make a payment, they are decreasing. So you credit cash or bank, you debit rent expense. Now, again, this is the, adjust, the closing entry. Sorry, I keep saying adjusting. That's something a little different, right? So we are transferring the rent expense incurred to the income statement. So we're going to debit the income statement, which means you have to credit the rent expense account. Also, the other way to think about it is that you have to, you have to send to the income statement 12000 from here. And it's 12000 because, remember, it was 1000 a month, and a year is 12 months. 12 by 1000 is 12000 Right? So we're going to put income statement here, 12000 and we're going to put balance carried down, right? 6000 and that's going to represent our prepaid balance at end. So, of course, to, for the journal entry, we're going to debit income statement and we're going to credit the rent expense account. Now, I hear some of you all say, but Chris, something wrong with that. Now, it's not wrong. Let me explain. Some of you all, instead of putting a balance carried down here, what you all do is you all put prepaid rent. Right? Now, this is perfectly fine because the two methods, the method I, I had before with the balance carried down, so let's put that in, right? Balance carry on, that is more of the British version, which people in the Caribbean, the CSEC people learn. But the funny part about it is that when you get to the Form 6 level, the CAPE level, you all are expected to know this version, which is the more American version of accounting. So I suggest you all either talk to your teacher about it, complain to CXC, or complain to the examining body, and figure out what you're supposed to know for when. Because I find it a bit ridiculous. You all know one thing at the Form 5 level, and something completely different in the Form 6 level. Anyhow, that's about it for me for today, folks. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to check out more playlists, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my website for free POA handouts. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Bye.